So I get, hello and welcome to the special edition of the uh, Driving Wall Show uh, here. Looking back at Southland's 2020 season um, with special guest Steve um, Mitchell, who is being very patient with me because I forgot to press record the first time and we were 10 minutes in. Um, absolute uh, idiot of me. I'm very sorry to him and uh, hopefully um, you'll understand if he... Uh, Looks a little bit cranky, but uh, thank you very much for joining me, Steve. Um, your first season as the general manager at um, uh, Southland, um, and say, looking at your LinkedIn profile, you joined in um, April, and one of my three questions was going to be, uh, how has COVID changed the role? But I guess arriving in the middle of COVID, you've <laughs> that's an unfair question uh, for you. But uh, yeah, a tough start to, to land um, exactly during the hardest time, perhaps for provincial rugby in the last, well, however long. Yeah, look, it was always going to be a bit of a challenge coming down here, regardless of COVID. And then um, I was stuck at home. I couldn't get down here until May. I took the job in April, but uh, I'd Zoomed in and, and got to meet the staff and also some of the club personnel. We had Zoom meetings with up to 70 participants on here. So sort of didn't quite get my feet on the ground, but it started um, seeing who was who and who was doing what. Um, yeah, and then got down here in May. It was... Um, yeah, the, the, down here the people are very welcoming and they're pleased to see somebody coming along committing to the cause. So, yeah, challenging, but it was always going to be a challenge. Yes, I mean, you've, you had uh, not nearly five years with Tasman, one of the uh, well um, most functional um, provincial unions around. Uh, um, talked with the, the, the CEO there earlier in the season. He talked about how they had a rainy day fund and obviously they've won back-to-back -back championships. To so come from that to... Um, Southland, which has a reputation from outside at least of uh, sort of not having the strongest finances, um, some uncertainty around the ground um, as, as, as well, was a, must be a, a, um, a big challenge um, for you down there. Yeah, look, I, um, I was approached by Tasman about six years ago to come and help them. And, um, and when I first went there, there was two goals. One was to win the premiership and the other one was to host the first ever All Black Test. So um, as of last year, both those goals were achieved. So it was time for a new challenge. Um, and lucky enough that my son had come home from Australia and he's prepared to look after the farm as my wife and I look for a new adventure. So um, I've come down here by my lonesome for the first six months and then my wife comes down after Christmas. But look, um, you know, if you want to make a big difference, what do they say? Pick the worst house in the street and go hard. And so that's why I pick South. And I also, there's a few things down here for me that are a bucket list. You know, going into Fiordland, going to Stewart Island. I actually shot my first deer about two, three weeks ago. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, we've seen the whole top of the South Island. I could have just parked up and waited to retirement, but I wanted another challenge, and here we are. So if those were your two goals arriving at Tasman, um, are you allowed to tell us, uh, is it public what your what your goals are for, for Southland? Is it to win a championship and to host the All Blacks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, first of all, it's actually just to get my feet on the ground and have a look at the existing structure and make some, um, what they say, quick runs. Um, you know, all provincial unions have been charged with creating a bare bones, cost effective organisation to deliver both the community and the high performance game. And that's a challenge for us all. Um, there's great support down here. And as I've previously said, great people. Uh, there's possibly been some challenging and um, quick changes of management. There hasn't been a lot of consistency. You know, people have referred to me as the revolving door of Rugby Southland in regards to staff. So what I'd like to try and do is create an atmosphere and an organisation that keeps its people, keeps its good people, has clear direction on where they want to go. Um, that's probably the major goal is actually to get the organisation operating effectively. Then from there, yeah, definitely not so much the premiership, initially the championship. I'd like to win the championship within three years. I'd like to get back into our home of rugby down here, Rugby Park, and I'd like to increase uh, game attendance and, um, as I say, stag performance, as well as further support the community game. So talking about the community game, uh, you're, you're in a um, one of the rural uh, provinces, so you've got the country clubs as well as sea clubs, quite a big area that you, that you cover. Uh, how, are, how have they? How have the clubs survived COVID? Are they all... Um, sort of financially still be able to keep going and uh, and have have uh, have good crowds or how, how was it how, how was the community game down there well once you know when i first got down here the first game i went to was a div two game and it was out of pioneer um honestly the crowd was three deep 
around the ground and the clubhouse was just chocker it was pumping it was like people were really waiting for something to happen to get out and, and uh, socially interact it was pretty impressive um also down here you've got right down to the president's grade so you've got you know the big boys they're still running around for fun so it's not necessarily fully focused on highly competitive which is really pleasing to see um the clubs are strong we've just um myself and some of the community staff have just been attending the agms um, just putting a set rugby south and face alongside the clubs as they hold their AGMs. And look, yeah, the strength of the clubs down here, their financial sustainability, um, the good people, you know, it, 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 I mean, it's just about the same all over New Zealand. But down here, yeah, it's very pleasing to see the clubs are strong. There's 33 clubs across this region. And as you say, it's a massive region. It's probably three and a half hours from one side to the other. Yeah, well, it's great. To, it's great to hear that the the the, uh, the the clubs are secure financially and and will be will be continuing to be that hub, um, social hubs, especially uh, in the rural ones where they where they're big part of, part of the social hub of the of the community. Um, looking at some and, and talking about that sort of side of things, uh, on the uh, Dale McLeod, we had a chat with him earlier in the season, um, just before uh, as a preview for the uh, super for the sorry for the Mighty Ten Cup. Um, and it was interesting that he's uh, sort of uh, he's done a lot of good work there, hasn't he? Raising the standard of those um, uh, the, the club game, uh, so that the players are ready to to come into the Mice Ten Cup squad, even if they are from the uh, second division. Yeah, correct. Dale's been down here for a couple of years, and um, as assistant coach, he went out and he met with all the club personnel. He, he he's got quite clear expectations on if you want to get to a certain level, then you've got to be able to perform at this speed. This you know ability and um so so the players out there in clubland know what it takes to be a stag and and so yeah he has he's gone out he does a lot of coach education at the senior level as well um and just trying to to create a clear and fully understood pathway for those club personnel uh, to, to get to that top level he also has a, a holistic view on the the athletes if you like um you know, he likes to keep an eye on them and make sure that everything in their lives are clicking so they can play to their top top performance um, yeah, he's done a hell of a lot of work and I think you've we seen this year we've had a couple of Div 2 players have a run for the Stags and we've got other other boys that are probably one to two years away from playing at Stag level but they are running with our wider training groups we've got a, an academy and a pre-academy where your nutrition and strength and conditioning and that it's all being fed into them so by the time they hit that level they're well aware of what it, what's required to be a Stag yeah and with um, well assuming that Wikipedia is correct. Um, it looks like yes, like 12 players have to join the squad due to uh, obviously injuries along the way. Um, one of the comments we made in the, the pre-show or, the, or the, the, the failed recording was that it's not it's not just important how that top team is. Um, you're going to need, there's opportunities. You've got to have that second, third tier of players available if you want to be challenging for the championship. Oh, correct. You know, depth, depth is, a, is a key component. And not only that, you know, you're just building feeders all the time. So, you know, one tier goes through and gets up to the next level, then you've got another tier coming through. Um, yeah, it, it's it, it's something that Dale sees a real um, need for, and it's something that I fully support, that we are trying to build depth right across all grades and, and just, you know, create that pathway there and, easy, and easily understandable. So um, the... Uh, and also, yeah, I mean, this season obviously was a, was, um, was was a good stepping stone. Last year, you you, you won just one game in the Mighty Ten Cup. This year, three plus. You were close in a few more as well. So, um, whilst okay, not 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 in the finals, perhaps not where you would like to have been. But you've got to be happy with uh, the, the the step forward um, that you saw in the Mighty Ten Cup this year. Oh, look, I'm you know I'm a little bit of a tough critic. So yes, yes, when I first came down here, I thought two games and get off the bottom of the table would be a fair goal. But um, as I got down here and I saw the potential in the team, I thought four wins in a semi final would have been probably a true reflection of of the capability we had within the team. So um, you know, at the end of the debrief, rightly or wrongly, I said to the boys, I think they let themselves down. That was a little extra. Uh, bite we could have actually got to the semi-finals um, and and to be honest the players agreed the players agreed and and so they knew so you know the expectation next year is to lift it again um, that those boys that played at a level will come back and they will lift that level another 5 10 15 degrees and play a little bit harder a little bit faster and a little more committed 
Um, but it, for, for me personally, it was great to see a belief in the team. It was great to see a belief grow back in the community. I mean, some of our games, you know, we had um, 7,500 people at that Blair Vining fundraiser that led on to Taranaki. I mean, that was a massive, that's the biggest crowd they've had at um, Rugby Park for quite some time. Um, we beat Otago. We beat Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay took it out and we beat them at home. You know, when we beat Otago, that's the first time in seven and a half years. So, you know, hats off to, to the games they played well. But some of, you know, some of the losses were pretty hard to swallow. At one point, we were eight points away from five from five. So, you know, so the potential's there. The potential's there and um, and the expectations are clear and the players know what, what they need to do, really. And I like how you put it. You didn't say you guys have failed this year to to, to achieve. You said you've let yourselves down, um, and that's uh, there. There are different ways of delivering a message, and it's um, and that's uh, a much more positive way of doing it. And yeah, um, I like to. It's good good to hear that uh, that kind of language um, within the within the organisation. Um, the so on reflection uh, of the the year, what has been your main challenge, um, and what has been your main success? Do you think? Or, or are they the same thing this year? Um, the, the, these roles are quite complicated. Um, you know, you, you're dealing with wide and varied groups of stakeholders. You're dealing with um, everything from councils to club representatives to an under six coach to, you know, a high performance athlete. Um, so the challenges are, are across the board. Probably the, the the biggest change, if you like, the biggest change is the belief is. You know, I think I think after four or five years of being bottom of the table, um, it was pretty hard for people to be positive about the Stags. Um, I must admit, the community down here love their rugby and they love their Stags. Everywhere you go, there's a Stags head, whether it's on a teacup, whether it's on the back of a ute, whether it's it's just everywhere, and they love their Stags. And they don't expect us to win every game, but they expect us to compete and hold our heads high, which possibly wasn't the case and this year it, it's a change it's turned um and yeah the, the positivity in the town is huge around them so look i think like i say i think we perform below our potential this year and um and i'm really looking forward to another lift next year well i i think your biggest su success was perhaps your training jersey that was the uh, the nicest jersey in the in the country i I'd, uh, really love love that one that i think that that should be a playing jersey personally i think that tartan was was um was, was 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 great um how do you see uh, covid changing um provincial rugby or or, or, or where do you think provincial rugby uh, is, is is kind of heading i know there's there's a uh, as we record there's a meeting this evening with new zealand rugby council to vote on a bunch of stuff so and i'm sure there's things that you can't talk about but uh what's your vision for where for where provincial rugby is going if i just sort of back back a bit but um I think COVID has shown that that the community game of rugby is massive. Um, you know, when everyone came out of lockdown, just the enthusiasm and the the amount of people at clubs and the positivity around club rugby, it just shows that rugby is more than a high performance game. It is a strong community game, and it does gel and knit a community, and it provides all sorts of social, physical. Um, activity and opportunity for, for a wide range of community people so you know although COVID has come with some hooks and some issues and everything it's certainly highlighted to me that that aspect of our game is somewhat underrated and the community game is huge it's absolutely huge and that is that is the base on which we build um, the other challenges you know the, the changes and, and the opportunity to revisit rugby given the financial challenges I mean they're ongoing um, as, as far as uh, Southland are concerned, we are a Mitre 10 Provincial Union team and we will continue to be. You know, we will certainly perform at Mitre 10 level and we will uh, continue to play at that level. Um, the other things, you know, the funding issues. I mean, you know, everybody's facing funding issues a whole lot. We've got some um, really strong support down here. Uh, we've certainly, certainly got to revisit our commercial and marketing focus and... Um, probably diversify our income streams a little bit more um but you know there are challenges everybody's facing and uh yeah you know with every challenge comes an opportunity so you've uh, you also said you, you you're a hard task master you've done the review for the mighty 10 cup team 
Um, when it comes to your annual review, um, and you said you've been brought down there to really to um, uh, put together a sustainable um, uh, uh, community and uh, high performance game, is, I think was, 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 you said was your main goal. So how would you, what grade would you give yourself for this season? Um, and how do you think you've done uh, with, with that goal in mind, as opposed to, as, as you say, the performance actually on the minor team cup field is more Dale McLeod's kind of piece. That's your, you've you got much more a much bigger holistic view. Oh, look, I think, you know, if I had to write a script on how things were going to go when I got here, um, to be honest, it's gone slightly better than I thought. Um, you know, there's been some changes in uh, both governance focus. Um, I've brought back some key stakeholders. We've got Lester Rutledge has come on to the uh, board as the president, which is... Um, more onto the union as the president, which is really good. I mean, you know, the man's a legend and um, he's the granddaddy down here. Everyone respects Lester. So getting some of those old soldiers back around the table is um, beneficial. Uh, we've got Jimmy Cowan and um, Jason Rutledge running water for the team. Everywhere we've gone, we've had an old stag player come in and, and run water for the team. And, you know, the old life members go and present the jerseys and tell the young fellas what it means to be a stag and what it means to be a stag playing against Otago. So just trying to bring pride and ownership back to the jersey, not me personally, but the wider community, the community that owns this rugby down here. Um, yeah, look, I've had to make some tough calls on some staffing structures and on some, um, you know, some roles that were probably surplus, uh, especially given the challenges under COVID. I'm going to refocus on the JOB development from um, two JOB officers. We're looking to employ a few more and focus on the kids and getting more kids into the game at grassroots. Um, working alongside council, trying to get back into the home of rugby, which is, uh, you know, going quite positively. Um, that's been a bit of an issue for quite some time. Yeah, so no, look, I think it's it's going quite well. Been around and visited as many clubs as I can, but like I say, it's a massive catchment. Um, yeah, so just trying to work it out. And yeah, you know, new town. You've not been to all 33 of them. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've been to about 12, I think. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's three and a half hours across the, across the whole catchment both ways and, uh, and trying to find your way around when you're not a local. But anyway, it's look, I, people have been really welcoming. Um, people have been quite pleased with the way things have gone. I've definitely been impressed with the way the stags have changed. Um, so, yeah, no, it's all pretty positive. I'm heading home for a month. Well, yeah, I'm heading home. And to be honest, to get away and charge my batteries and see my family, because I've been batching down here, which is a bit unusual for me after 30 years of Harry. Um, miss my dog, miss my chainsaw, miss my motorbike. But anyway, you know, you go home, charge your batteries and come back for round two. I'm really looking forward to it. Great to hear that things are going positively. Um, I guess one piece that does um, appear to be missing from the puzzle that, uh, that we see, I think, is in other places, is a Farrah Palmer Cup side. Uh, is there a is is there a plan to to grow the women's game up so that you can have a Farrah Palmer Cup side? And what's uh, are, are there any plans in that area? Yeah, look, we, we certainly we've employed a young lady by the name of Georgia Mason who played fifty four games for Otago Spirit. She's a tough little open side flanker, um, and she's only been employed this year. So we're doing all sorts of analysis across the numbers. We were predicting about I think it was eight women's teams this year, but COVID knocked it back, um, and. You know, yeah, the, the girls who have a lot of capability down this area up until recently have all been pulled away. So it's um, so somehow we have to uh, create depth, create numbers, and then keep a carrot to keep them here. Um, we are the only provincial union without a Farrah Palmer Cup team, so yes, it is a goal. Um, I've got a meeting early in January with uh, John Haggett from NZR and Kendra. I've worked previously with Kendra and I was involved in establishing the Farrah Palmer Cup team in Tasman. So well aware of the work that needs to be done. Um, a bit reluctant to put out an underpowered team to get a hiding. So we have got quite a bit of work to do. We've got an academy at the moment running alongside the young ladies and we've got quite a few players coming in doing strength and conditioning, nutrition and skill set training as well. So, yeah, so it, it's in the pipeline, but it needs to be done properly. No, absolutely agreed. Um, and uh, you can uh, you, you see, as you say, retaining that talent is is a big issue. And you see it with Tasman, with the difference between the men's and the women's sides that they have uh, is um, uh, that they again their, their retention of those of the women's players is difficult, and, and hence they don't have a their, their women's side is a lot less competitive than their men's side. Um, 
it's great to hear that there's a whole bunch of building blocks being put in place for it um, because like from the outside obviously we don't see necessarily here or see that but having the academy is clearly a, a, a significant step towards being able to have a team um, as well so great to hear um thank you so much for your time um and uh, it's great to hear things positive happening down there in um in southland um folks i'm going to try and uh, get around a few more of the ceos who are particularly those who are new uh, to the role um this year uh, to just to, to hear what um what they've learned in the role and uh, how covid has 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 um has impacted that so please uh, do like the facebook page youtube channel or subscribe to the podcast here at New Zealand Sports Radio. Um, thank you, Steve, for your time. And um, I'm so sorry for wasting 10 minutes of your time by not recording the first time around. No problem at all, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. And look, if I could just finish and say that, um, you know, the community down here is um, amazing. They've made me feel really welcome. They're passionate about their stags. And I think uh, given their support and their belief, you know, you watch this space, mate, the stags are coming back. Great to